Monmouth has come out blazing. They've hit four out of five and lead it eight to five. Bob Rathman, Brian Oliver with you. And not only did King Rice have to replace practically his entire ball club from a year ago, they're also, Brian, moving up to the Colonial this season, a much stronger conference. And I had a chance to talk with King before the game, and this is huge for their program because what it does is that it allows you to be able to play teams like that. A big shot in the arm as far as recruiting and getting players for a program that historically, while he's been there, has been able to have some really good players and be able to have a lot of success. So here come the Hawks out of the timeout, leading 8-5. Foster, as Virginia is dialing up the defensive pressure. You saw Allen brought another defender. A lot of times, if you want to give a big an opportunity to ISO, you want to stay away. Virginia has shown that every time that Foster gets that ball, they're going to send a, sec a second defender. Clock at 6. Ruth to the corner and a very tough shot. And this one out of bounds to Virginia. Solid defensive effort by Virginia. And earlier on in this 8-5 lead by Monmouth, eight of those points have been able to come in the paint. And again, you want to make sure that you spread Virginia out and you play and make them have to deal with the penetration. That last time, solid defensive possession by Virginia. Cavaliers put Ben Vanderplas into the game. The veteran big coming to UVA. Gardner missing, and then a foul on Monmouth. That last defensive possession, Monmouth going with a, de uh, a zone. You could not allow uh, Gardner to be able to get the ball down there that low because he's one of those guys that will punish you. You get a guy on the backside, it's either going to be a bucket or you give him an opportunity for offensive rebound. Jaden Gardner only scored three points in the opener, but he did go over 2,000 in his career. He was 0 for 4 from the field the first time that he's gone over in a game since his collegiate debut in November of 2018. I and mean, when you look at what he's been able to do since coming here to Virginia, he's a guy that can shoot the ball mid-range with that body. He does a good job of sealing guys down low, too. All ACC performer a year ago. He hits two free throws for Coach Bennett and makes it an 8-7 game. Jack Collins, back to the basket, Foster. Again, here comes the double team. Allen. And underneath the defense is Miles Foster for the lay-in. He's got six. And that play started with Foster being able to recognize the double team, get the ball out, and then not settle, not stand still. And Great Brian, job. you don't see a lot of panic at Monmouth. Absolutely. They're running their offense. And again, you got to have discipline. You see a wide open Franklin. Tapped out. Clark lets it fly. He connects. Best time to shoot it to kick out. Three is on the kick out offensive rebound. Game's tied at 10. Collins gets rid of it. Ruth cross court. Collins off the bounce. And he hits a three. Jack Collins' first basket. And here's the thing. For a team that can get some early offense, they start to build a little confidence. You can tell with this Monmouth team, they're really comfortable with what they're getting on their offensive sets. And Brian Collins, case in point, he was 0 for 8 on threes at Seton Hall. Hits us this one with a confident stroke. Corner three is good. Great shot by McNeely. And good kick out then, recognizing the double then. McNeely gets a chance to sit his feet. We talked about Franklin being a guy that can light it up from outside. outside. McNeely's another one of those guys. If you allow him to see daylight, he could be dangerous. Tied at 13. Collins off the mark. Clark to the corner. McNeely's fouled. And free throws to come. The foul on Jack Collins is going to be his second foul. Again, Bob, we were talking about this Virginia team. And how about Vanderplaus realizing double team gets it over to McNeely. Again, being a willing passer and understanding where your guys are, 
Tony Bennett talked about how his team is much improved. He's got some guys that can definitely shoot from behind the arc. Three free throws for Isaac McNeely, six foot four freshman out of Polka, West Virginia. And of course, the Polka Dots. That's the team nickname. No, that's why I call you Bob the Jewel. You're always <laughs> dropping jewels. Oh, and this is the first two out of three. Polka between Charleston and Huntington. Beautiful Kanawha Valley. 13 all. Jack Holmstrom, 6'6 junior, is in for Monmouth. And avoiding the hat trick, McNeely hits the final free throw. His fourth point, he had three, hitting a three-pointer in Monday's game against NC Central. 14-13. Miles Ruth. Foster. Allen baseline runner. Loose ball. Cavs hit the deck to get it. Clark running the show. McNeely. There he goes. Two threes out of the corner. And McNeely being able to, to eat off of Vanderpuss the second time where he's been able to put the ball on the floor, realize that the double team is coming, and letting that ball get out of his hand. He's a good split by Roof. And the lane is good. Miles Foster. Miles Foster up to eight points. 17-15. This tempo has to favor Monmouth because, again, able to run their sets and get what they want. Nice penetration. And a blocking foul on Monmouth in the first half. A time for our four keys to the game. Bob, what you see for both teams, you know, it's important for, for Monmouth to push the speed limit. You can't afford to have this a low-scoring game. And Virginia, paint production. Again, being able to not only just get the ball down low, but being able to get down into the lane, create offense. Both teams right now doing a very good job of being able to get their offense. But how about Monmouth? Of that 15 points, 12 of those in the paint. They're getting the paint production. They are getting it. And what you look at is that typically with this Virginia team, that pack line defense is very hard to penetrate. Monmouth doing a good job of being able to spread them out and have their defense, I mean, their offense, be very, very precise and lead those early opportunities. A hearty start to watch is the 24-year-old 60-year senior Ben Vanderplatz coming over to Virginia to play this final se season, the Ohio University transfer, who had 17 in Ohio's upset win of UVA in the NCAA tournament in 21. Primed to have a fine, fine season. A lot of family history that we'll get into with the Bennett family during our broadcast tonight. 17 to 15, Virginia. Ryan Dunn has checked in for the Cavs, number 13. This is Clark. Kihei spins and connects. Nice move. It was really smooth by Kihei Clark. Being able to get into the lane, gather himself. He's never one of those guys, especially the offense, is going to be sped up by the defense. Andrew Paul, number four for Monmouth. This is Holmstrom. Again, Miles Foster gets into the paint, and he throws that left-hand baby hook and looks good doing it. And he was able to go one-on-one -on -one against Vander Plows, and again, surprisingly, Virginia didn't send that other guy. You don't want him to be able to get to that left hand because, again, big build, athletic enough to be able to shoot over Vander Plows. 19-17, Virginia. Clark with a bounce to the corner. Now up top, Vander Plows. Too long, and a foul called on Miles Foster. That will be his first. Up front, Miles Foster, his first. Six on the team. Big Ben's going to be hitting that foul line. He's got three free throws coming. He is named Ben, as you see. The foul late as uh, Foster got underneath the shooter. He's named Ben for the Bennett. 
family. Dad Dean played with Tony at uh, Wisconsin Green Bay when Tony's dad Dick Bennett was the head coach. Uh, quite a thrill for this product of Ribbon, Wisconsin. Come play for Tony in his final collegiate season. Twenty-one seventeen, Virginia. Halfway through the first half. Boga out of Slovenia. Pump fakes, turns, blocked. Cavaliers have it. Paint point starting to dry up now. But Mama just a bit. We've got a foul coming on the cam. You saw Shedrick not hold that pick. So Kia Claw come off, and those big guys got to hold it. Shedrick was trying to roll too fast. And again, even though Virginia has this four-point lead, you have to be impressed with Monmouth up until now and how they've been to come out and run their sets. Again, we talked about this Virginia team has all the guys. You see a little bit of a stumble there, a little tiptoe through the tulips. <laughs> Twenty-one seventeen is our score. Reese Beekman coming back in for Virginia, and uh, it's going to be McNeely to head out of the game. Oh, good job by Isaac McNeely, and I know Cavalier fans are getting excited about his shooting touch. Well, and he's shown he comes out, give him daylight, and you've got guys like Vanderpuelsen that can play inside out, and then defense is going to have to play him, and then McNeely showing early, early recipient to knock down a shot. Three ball, good by Ryan Dunn. But how the execution by Key and Clark realizing that you get into the lane, you know your big is going to have to work, roll. Defense got to count for that, and being able to get the, the roll back out. Great play. Dunn One, knocking down the three. 24-17, doubled in the post, and the Cavaliers come away with it. Clark on the push to Bigman. Clark is open, takes it, makes it. For King Rice. A turnover into a touchdown. Kihei Clark at the other end. Here you see Kihei Clark being able to dance with it a little bit, get into the lane. was like, you know what, Dunn? I got it for you. It's done, done, and done. And then getting out, and then Reese Beekman was like, you know what? See, he was like, oh, pump fake. See you later. Knocking down the three. Virginia on a nice little run up by 10. 8.40 left in the half, and just like that, Brian, Virginia jumps out to a 10-point lead. And how many times have we talked about Virginia being able to get out and transition and be the, the fast break team, but when you got the type of playmaker in the key mark and you got guys that can shoot the ball around them, that shows a nice little offensive rhythm. They started out slow, but they picked it up as of late. An 8-0 run for the Cavs in the last minute and a half. They have not missed a shot here in their last six trips. It's been quite a turnaround for Virginia from the start of this game. But we talked to Tony Bennett, and he was talking about how his guys put in the work to become better offensive. You know what you get from this defensive team. This is one of the, the, the best returning defensive team in the league. And then you've got guys that can shoot the ball. That makes it a lot more dangerous for them. Foster tries to blow through a double team, and this time a foul is called. And this will be on Jaden Gardner. And if you're King Rice's ball club, the one thing that you cannot do is allow Virginia to, to, to speed you up. They were able to come out, be patient, run their sets. That Virginia defense will create havoc, and now it's got Monmouth a little bit kind of forcing things. you got to slow down and run your offensive possessions. Ruth. Oh, great. Rejected. Second chance for Allen. What a great block by Shedrick. And now a foul coming on Monmouth. So a great penetration by Miles Ruth. And how about Shedrick going to the upper room, Bob Rathbun? Yes, sir. Get that and say, no, no cookies for you tonight. <laughs> 
Shedrick blocked two against NC Central last season. He had 67 blocks for UVA and 47 dunks. Meanwhile, for Monmouth, Jack Collins just picked up his third foul, so he's got to come out of the game. And the first shot by Shedrick is good. 71% at the line a season ago. In the ball game for Monmouth, Amon Sandu. He wears number 33. Big post up inside against Shedrick. Oh, big bodies going at it. And they spot the foul on Gardner, his second. Again, with the way that Virginia's playing, you see that they're, they're scoring the ball a lot easier than the beginning of the game. Intensity has picked up. They're flying around. And then Monmouth's spacing, you can see it starting to dwindle again. The way they got the lead earlier, or stayed in the game, was to be able to spread Virginia out. Because again, if you allow Virginia to get you out of your sorts, it's gonna make it hard for you to run your sets. Sandu fighting for position inside. Now backing out is Ruth. And the shot clock expired. And Bob, you saw that. Ruth had nowhere to go. You had three defenders from Virginia there. Again, chaos for them. Virginia being able to roll with this defense up 12 right now. It's 40 mark of the first half in Virginia has expanded the advantage to 12 to 29 to 17. Monmouth has gone two minutes and 40 seconds without a point. And they're turning it over now against this defense. And what, you, what, you, what stands, stands out for me is that Virginia already six for eight from behind the arc against mm -hmm. North Carolina Central had 11 threes. They're already half of that. And then how about the bench points? Again, we always emphasize the defense for Virginia. It's their offense that has taken it to another notch in the first half. And McNeely with seven of those 12 bench points. He's got two of those six threes. The Virginia Cavaliers, the new three-point shooting machine in the ACC. And, and that's one of the things, Bob, again, this is a team that generally will hold this, hold this opponents to 60 points a game. When you get them to the point where they're knocking down the three regularly and they're shooting and hitting 11, 12 threes a game, that makes them really difficult to deal with when you start talking about getting into ACC play and all the further into the non-conference schedule. You see Amon with his back to you, the first player out of India to sign an NCAA scholarship. He made his debut at Seton Hall. Big fellow, the seven foot one freshman, went for five points and four boards in 16 minutes against the Pirates. Cavs have it out of the timeout. Vander Blocks. Now Reese Bigman to the corner. Clark, sidestep three. And Shedder just goes over everybody to get it. Gets tied up in a hell ball. The arrow gives it to Virginia. Shedrick is long and athletic. And the way that Virginia is flying around, again, you see the pump fake by Kihei Clark. And then look at Shedrick goes up amongst the defenders there. A lot of times with bigs, you don't want them to bring that ball down. And then again, just being able to create another opportunity by getting that offensive rebound. Clark on the oh, Wow. Shedrick with a jam. And, and here's the thing is the patience by Kia Clark to be able to probe into the defense, force the help. Again, for a guy like Shedrick, you just throw it anywhere near the rim, and he's going to be able to finish it. Allen to the top. Now a deflected pass and a foul called on Virginia. Kihei Clark, of course, the most experienced point guard in the country. And you got to believe, Ryan, the game just slows down for him so much now at this stage of his career. But when you see him get into the lane, take his time and wait for his big to come off of that screen, to probe that defense, freeze them a little bit. And once you do that, then you know that you're throwing it to him. And there's no one can stop him from dunking that ball at the alley oop. Shedrick's second foul, six on Virginia, Monmouth with 17 fouls, 640 left, first hand. Allen 
And another foul on the Cavs on the pass. You see out on that penetration from Monmouth to crawl back into this game. You gotta be a little bit more patient. You're not going to be able to get back into this game going one on one because Virginia's defense is way too well. You always need too good. You always hear about the pack line defense. There's always two guys in the line of that, dri that dribble penetration. So for Monmouth, they gotta find some way to get back to how they're spreading Virginia and move that ball, force that defense to shift. Ramon Franklin's foul puts Ron Allen on the line for a one and one. This is the front end. 31-17. This is the second opportunity to strike for Monmouth. Ramon Franklin gives it up. Here's Beekman. Four on the shot clock. Dunn into the paint. And the ball's out of bounds to Virginia. But that was a really good defense possession by Monmouth because they were able to stave off penetration by Virginia, force them to go east and west with that, that possession. They have to come up with that defensive rebound. Jack Holmstrom comes in for Monmouth. And now Isaac McNeely comes in for Virginia. McNeely, a two-time Gatorade Player of the Year in West Virginia. A long toss into the backcourt in Franklin. Under six in the first half. Franklin lost a dribble, got it back, fumbled it, got it back. McNeely, done, and a foul. This is going to go against Virginia. Ryan Dunn moving the folks out of the way and we'll go to the other end for free throws first foul on the Freeport New York freshman Miles Ruth to the line his freshman year he made 14 starts the point for Monmouth then gave way to Shabir Reynolds Came over to play at Monmouth last year. Now moves back in this season. Six feet tall, junior. And puts in the second shot. First points for Monmouth in the last four minutes and 40 seconds. And I was going to say, we talked about how they were able to break down the Virginia defense, but as of late, Virginia doing a better job and making it difficult and putting the clamps on them. And those opportunities have been far and few be between them. Band applause. And Ted Valentine spots a foul on Monmouth. Monmouth foul on 14, Jack Holster. I believe Jack Holmstrom was the guilty party, and that's his first. Free throws for the Cavs. That's 18 fouls now on Monmouth. When you look at what Virginia has out there with adding Von DePlos and Dunn, it's amazing because, again, this is a veteran ball club that last year I felt that towards the end of the season probably got a little tired because they were playing such a short lineup. You've got the returning guys. You add the new guys. Makes them a much more uh, dangerous team. Tony likes his ball club. They've got an interesting mix of veterans and, that have been homegrown, veterans from the outside, and some young talent that's come into the program. Done with the good defense. Now coming over is Rue. 5-10 to go, first half. And the fans getting excited for this good Cavalier D. Dunn trying to shake and bake his way into the paint, getting denied. Turns and that shot's blocked. Pulled out by Vanderblas. Up the floor to Franklin. Armand Euros and misses. Tip no. Dunn gives it up, but Mama takes it away. Here's Ruth going up. And another foul coming on Virginia. This will be on Vanderblas. Heading to the line will be Miles Ruth. Miles Ruth to the line. 
He hit the two free throws a moment ago. Last year hit 78% at the line for Monmouth. Now a message from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro. Powerful tools for any project with gas like power without the gas. Fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. Got a both. Jakari Spence, a Robert Morris transfer. He is in. He played well at Seton Hall. Had five assists and five rebounds. 33-21. Nicely done off the glass for Reese Beekman. And Beekman's one of those guys, if you let him get downhill with as athletic as he is, nice little runner. And again, Virginia clicking on all cylinders here. Offensive foul coming on Monmouth. Miles Foster. And that's his second foul. Sandu coming back in. Bob, well, we've talked a lot about Kihei Clark and how he does such a good job of running this offense, but Reese Beekman, he does an amazing job too when Kihei Clark goes out because he's steady, takes his time, runs the offense, and he takes the opportunities when they come. Very hard again, like I said, when he can get downhill. Vanderplas, oh, right to nice. the hole. That is nice. Vanderplas has shown you that he can give it to you in a lot of different ways. He can post you up, force the double team, knock down the three. That last time, big fella putting the ball on the floor with a little up and under. And we've got a foul coming on Monmouth. 3.46 to play in the half, but a timeout at Charlottesville. Caps by 16. And because again, you saw that 2000 member of that 2019 national championship team. But what he brings to this team is again a, a, a calming effect for Tony Bennett offensively and defensively. You know, takes plays within himself. Already has eight points, and it's how he gets his shots and still keeps everyone else involved. Ten on the shot clock for Beekman. On the ball. Kihei Clark kind of surprised Tony Bennett this summer when he decided to return for this fifth year. Grad student. And even without NIL after he leaves school, he won't have to pay for meal in Charlottesville. Anybody on that 2019 championship team has got a gold pass. In absolutely, this absolutely. You look at it, a little over three minutes for, for Monmouth. Uh, the goal is to try to get this thing close to 10. And for King Rice, you want to go back to what you were doing earlier. Spread Virginia out. Run your sets. Try to get that ball into the paint. Make that extra pass. And you see Booga, nice little step under. Came up short, though. Ryan Dunn clears to Reese Bigman. The drive by Franklin and a foul. No, they're going to call it offensive. Franklin with his second personal. You see the penetration right there. Now he grabbed, he grabbed that, that little chicken wing action there. That's a no-no. Trying to sneak something like that past Ted Valentine. I was going to say no. Nah. It's like trying to sneak the sunrise past a rooster. <laughs> Another one of those Bob the Jeweler. 37-21 and a takeaway. Bigman middle lane out to Vanderplas to the trailing Clark. Then skip pass. The freshman McNeely. Beekman. Clark. And a blocking foul on Monmouth. No basket. 
Jakari Spence first foul. When you take a look at the first half, Monmouth was right there, 17 to 15 Virginia at the TV timeout at 11:04. They had 15 points at that stage of the game. They have scored six since then and four of them at the line. Well, and here's the thing, too, is that we talked about how they were able to put Virginia on their heels and get what they wanted. Virginia started scoring, energy went up, and then again, we talk about the fact that how they've been able to knock down the three. How about their presence in the paint, too? Already 14 points. And at the beginning, it was more Monmouth being able to dominate the paint. Virginia doing a much better job. Reese Bigman. Up and in. Two free throws pushes his point total to four. In the ball game for Virginia comes the sophomore Murray, the New Zealander, 39 to 21. Two minute mark, first hand. Virginia has really tightened the screws defensively as they are wont to do. Miles Rude and again the activity of Ryan Dunn. But Bob that last time you saw the penetration by Rude going down along the baseline. There were four Virginia defenders right there and talk about that pack line. He had nowhere to go and they were chasing him down and that's when it shows the intensity it picked up. Air ball, and it becomes a shot clock violation. That's the second that the Virginia defense is forced tonight. 39-21. McNeely works it out toward midcourt. Clark slipped. The ball goes out of bounds, but it was touched by Monmouth. That went off the fingers of Ruth. 15 on the shot clock. Hooks up, Sandu in. Allen to the bench. Virginia cl clicking on all cylinders here. You see Ruth not being able to get by Kia Clark. Puts up a wild one. 42 21 Virginia, final minute. The 18th ranked team in the country looking good here in this first half. corner for Murray but if you're Tony Ben you love that shot because again what you're doing is you're giving your shooters wide open shots and even if you don't make it you have to love that offensive possession seven second six and off the heel the ball rolls out of the backcourt two seconds one Ruth can't get it off and that suffocating Virginia defense just took Monmouth completely out of its offense the last nine minutes of the half. Lock down. And they appreciate the D here like nowhere else. Four get away, but banished to the bench with three personal fouls. He will start the second half for Monmouth. Hawks with the basketball. Here we go, second hand. Oh, 
Backdoor cutting Collins. And the pass goes out of bounds. Clark coming up. Franklin dumps it inside. Here's Gardner. Out of bounds to Virginia. Oh, Shedrick has made Mamas life miserable inside. You got to turn and put a body on him because, again, not only is he long, but he is athletic and active around the offensive boards. The three in the corner is short by Beekman. On the push, Collins. Nothing happening for Vuga. Now a great cut by Ruth, and he puts it in. Poor spacing initially by Mom, but Vuga doing a good job of being able to catch that ball. Good back cut by Ruth. Again, Virginia has shown that historically they could have some little uh, slumps on offense. For Monmouth, you got to get some stops, and then you got to be able to run your sets. On the bounce, Clark finds the diving Gardner to the hole. But how about the blow by by Kia Clark forced the defense to have to rotate and then Gardner being right place at the right time to be able to get, get him going because he's had a slow first half, but it's not because he's just haven't been productive. The guys around him have been just knocking down those shots. A block and a takeaway. Franklin gives to Beekman. Gets it back, drives, kicks. Inside, the big man gets a touch. Shedrick, no. Foul on Virginia. This is going to go on Gardner. I thought Beekman had a wide open three then. Sometimes you can be a little too unselfish. Yeah. That last time made a great play defensively. And then when you get that ball on rotation, you've got to keep the defense honest. Give yourself a chance. Gardner heads out with the three personals. Vanderplas in to take his spot. 44-23. Foster. Charge. I thought Foster could have gone with, gone with a little runner right there, but Vanderplas being right there to take it right between the numbers. Fourth foul on Miles Foster. Immediately comes out of the game. You see King Rice trying to talk to him about, hey son, you got to make sure that you take advantage of the opportunity. See Kia Clark with the blow by. Nice passing in the interior. Get Shedrick a dunk. But here's the thing, Bob. When you see K.A. Clark be able to get past the defender, then it's going to create havoc because he gets in the lane. He is very good at being able to pass the ball. And you see one pass to another. Shedrick is the recipient. A spin move and a nice fake and fire. Beautiful land by Vuga. Hey, Vuga with a nice little spin move. That last time he put Vendipas in the blender right there. <laughs> 46-25. Clark lobs. Shedrick goes up. And we got a foul coming on Monmouth. A push against Sandhu and Shedrick shaking up. You see Clark going up there and Sandhu not realizing it's about to be part of a poster there. But you see Shedrick come down. Awkward on that elbow, but Kihei Clark found himself wide open. I think he was a little surprised at how wide he was open in that lane. First of two, back iron. Fourth year junior, out of Brawley. And that big game and the victory at Duke last season. Didn't miss a shot. Eight for eight, 16. Splits the pair on this trip, 47-25. Good overplay by Shedrick. Caps force another turnover, and they are running. Oh, my. Two 
Bill Franklin. Franklin, go upstairs, young man. And Mama turns it over. And Bob, this is how Virginia gets you. They get you a little fluster, turnovers. Virginia gets out and you, Virginia gets out there and they turn that defense. It's a little defense to offense. Get out in the break and he was like, go upstairs, I got you. Virginia finishing up by 24. All together, they, they know how to play with one another. And I think you're seeing a little bit of that at the offensive end here tonight, Brian, 13 assists for Virginia on 15 field goals. Well, and we talked about, again, you know what you're getting from this Virginia team with defensively, but being able to have that extra time, you know, go on the trips abroad and build the camaraderie and the chemistry, there's a certain type of familiarity where you're willing to pass the ball, and you see that. They're out running and having fun. This is not what we're typically used to seeing from a Tony Bennett team getting out in fast break and transition and throwing lobs and getting the crowd all involved. Vanderplas to Clark. Ten on the shot clock. They change sides of the floor and get a three from Franklin. Great ball movement by Virginia, understanding that Monmouth's Mom in a zone. You don't panic. Ball goes east and west, and you get a wide open Franklin three. And again, talking about sharing the ball, great patience and offensive discipline. 52-25. Double the post, knock it away. And it's out of bounds to Virginia. We've got a timeout, 15-57 left, and Virginia piling it on against Monmouth. Can have, and a very impressive performance by UVA continues. The Cavaliers now lead it by 27. Cavaliers have forced 13 turnovers, and they have committed only four. And at 21 off of those turnovers, again, 14 assists, eight threes. Vanderplas. Another three for Virginia. I stand corrected, Bob Rathbun. Nine threes right now. <laughs> and, and again, you saw McNeely on the curl, forced the defense to head, and you saw Vanderplas being able to float out there. Tipped away on the post pass. Clark off the screen. He was going to shoot it and decided not to and tried to give it to Shedrick and he saw the end result. The last thing you want to do is throw the ball at your big man's ankles. <laughs> he didn't want that turnover. Ryan Dunn comes in. Freshman comes to get Shedrick. I like Dunn's activity. Yeah, and he's one of those guys, again, long, can shoot it, put the ball on the floor, and that length again. Clark, there he is, right to the hole. And, and you, it, you called it out, and it looked like he was about to put someone on the poster. But then again, long and active. I love his energy. 11 straight Cavalier points. Clark going for the steal and a foul on Monmouth on Miles Ruth. And Ruth has got to understand, he's got to read the scouting report. Understand that Kihei Clark is one of those guys that will pick your pocket. And that last time, just take it from him. You got to get that ball out of your hands quick. 57 to 25, Virginia. Clark with the contact. Foul on Jakari Spence. They are collegiate veterans. They know how to play. And they've got a nice mix. I like what Tony Bennett has done with this team. They've got the depth that they were missing last year. You see right now, this is two games where they're much improved three-point shooting team. 
And again, you can't overemphasize that their defense travels. This is a team that held their opponents to 60 points a game. A little problem at the scores table. Trying to get the clocks in sync, it appears. Well, high level discussion over there. Meeting of the minds. At four seconds, or at four seconds, Matt ma matters, Bob. McNeely. They work it back in the middle. Clark with 10 on the shot. Kicks it. McNeely. Slide to the left. My. Bingo. My. And, and how about the discipline of Kihei Clark to understand? We didn't get anything on the first look. Let's reset. I'll go ahead and break my defender's ankles, force to help. And then you see McNeely say, okay, you're going to come at me because when we shot fake you, birds in the air, knock down the three. This big Cavalier run continues. McNeely, three out of four from distance. And a blocking foul on Franklin. Bob, again, we talked about with, with Virginia and them being able to get these threes. How about this play you see? Shot flag up, got one in the air, knocked it down. The crowd already knows it. And again, this Virginia team again, right now, already 10 threes. And it shows they're no, they're no joke when it comes to shooting the ball. You talk about this defense travel, they've got length. Dare I say, I'm going out on a limb, that the way the makeup is, reminds me of the 2019 championship mm. team with their length, the defense, and how deep they are right now. Kid McNeely's got a nice stroke. 27 bench points for Virginia. Here's the ball tipped to the wing. Collins gives it up. Plenty of clock for Monmouth to work with here. To try to find that opening in the defense is another story. Allen double. Foster double. A little too aggressive and a push is called on Gardner. Gardner, what looks to be maybe his fourth foul, just came off the bench. Has not really been able to get much of a rhythm tonight because he's been in foul trouble. Shedros will come in for him. <laughs> Smothered at the glass. More great defense. Beekman. And we've got a blocking foul on Monmouth. We were talking about Ryan Dunn's uh, athleticism. You see this last play. You see Spence getting there late. Call for the block. You gotta move your feet. To the line for Virginia, Jaden Gardner. Two shots. Jaden Gardner. Came here and transfer from East Carolina. All ACC third team last season. The second shot for Gardner. Now Shedrick comes in for Jaden. Thirteen-minute mark, second half. Again, the Cavaliers doubling that post. Throws it across. Spence, he gets rid of it. Collins from the wing. Great defensive possession. Virginia forced Monmouth to go east and west, and they were helter-skelter. Never really being able to get any type of consistency with that possession. This is Burry. McNeely carries it out front. Murray. Spence rebounds. The big fellow's going to take one. And we've got a foul coming on Virginia and a push on Reese Beekman. That'll be his second. Monmouth has scored 10 points 
since the 11:04 mark of the first half. Well, and here's the thing too is that every time the ball goes into the post, you've got Virginia committed to doubling regardless of who's on the post. Mom has, has not been able to hit the paint as often as they did early in the first half. And again, Virginia is forcing them to have to speed up and they're not getting any clear looks. Shot clock at five. That hit the side of the glass. Leaking out is Murray. Catch laying good. And I felt like, you know, he shot that shot a little early, Bob. I think the kids got to him. They, they got to him. That, they were counting that clock down about four seconds earlier than it should have been. Nice move inside by Jack Collins. Nice move by Collins. And again, Collins has not had the success of being able to touch the paint with penetration. McNeely to Bigman. McNeely. Nothing but net. He's got a nice stroke there, Paul. Yes, he does. Oh my God. I mean, you saw him being able to sip. He's got great lift on his shot as well. Yes, the polka dots being heard from. 65-27. <laughs> 12 for McNeely. Murray on the bounce. Lay in. Is good by Ryan Dunn. And, and this is what you see. You talk about the vets and the new guys. Understanding that you play good defense. And then these guys with this energy are getting out and they're long and active, being able to get to the basket. And a bump by Dunn brings us to a timeout. Virginia continues to pour it on. They leap offensively, defensively. The three ball has been dropping with a great degree of regularity. Take a look at Bennett ball. Yes, Tony's got it all going at both ends, Brian. How about the 19 assists on 22 made field goals? 31 points off of turnovers. And it's just amazing. And we talked about the fact that how they're knocking down the threes, already 10 three-pointers. But then 33 bench points? Uh, again, I understand that Monmouth basically it's not being able to perform like that, but you've got to be excited if you're Tony Bennett and just how well his guys are playing. 67-27 is Motley. Has the basketball out of the timeout. A turnaround by Jaden Doyle, number one. He's just committed the game. Nice shot by Doyle, realized he couldn't get all the way down in the paint. The spin move, gather himself. Inside, Gardner, they work it up top to an open. Bigman and Grills, another Virginia three. And great recognition by Gardner. He's a guy that has struggled with his offense, decided not to, not to force it, makes the extra pass. And again, talking about good, pass, good shot for a better shot. Second straight game, Virginia has nailed 11 threes. Allen, he scores. Nice back down by Allen, realized no one came on the double. Going to get a much smaller Murray down there in the, for the bucket. First time back-to-back -back baskets for Monmouth since the opening three minutes of the game. Done inside Gardner. Tip no. Gardner fighting for it, but the loose ball claimed by Jaden Doyle. Picked off. Ryan Dunn. Another steal for Virginia. Now the Cavaliers. Reset here with 10 on the shot clock. Coming up, stay tuned for the Ford Fast Break presented by your local Ford dealer. And a foul on Doyle will send Ryan Dunn to the stripe. Eight thirty-one remaining. And this six-eight freshman is starting to open some eyes here with the way he has played tonight. Well, and you look at his length, the length as far as being able to get deflection. He's athletic. And he's closed the door, then a little, a little slight on that free throw there. 
Bigman goes out. Big round of applause. Done second shot. 70 31. And driving Allen will get two free throws. Allen has scored four tonight. He had 11 at Seton Hall, and that represented a new career high. 8.25 to play in the second half. And what you're seeing tonight from this Mama team is the growing pains of a rebuild. Well, and here's the thing, too, for King Rice is that, you know, we talked about the fact that they lost 84% of their scoring. And that's a lot, Bob. I and mean, you talk about coming here on the road to play against. The, the number 18 ranked team in the country that's a much more improved offensive team and you're going to have to bring, bring your a game they started out at the beginning virginia got going but these are the games that you learn from the non-conference games they get you ready for the conference play try to go with that lob shedrick gets fouled oh, Virginia puts Coleman into the game at the point. Trust me, this last time did not come. There was a foul, weak side help there. But there are going to be a lot of defenders on the backhand of lobs and posts by Shedrick. First shot, good. A 6'11", fourth year junior. Has the second shot. He is a walking pogo stick. 72. 232. Eight minutes to play. Chase Coleman defending for Virginia. Good hands. The ball squirts out to Holmstrom. And out of bounds to Virginia. We have a timeout in Virginia. Seven minutes and 43 seconds remaining. Cavaliers by 40. Number 18, Virginia may not stay at number 18. When the new polls come out, they have looked great tonight. A 2-0 getaway to their season. And we've seen the three-point shooting become a real positive here in these first couple of games for UVA, 22 makes in two games. And I think what stood out for me, too, uh, is the points off the turnovers. Uh, 31 tonight, the contribution from the bench, 33 points so far. Again, this is the Virginia team we talked that last year. Normally only went, with, only went seven deep and felt like the end of the season probably got a little tired. Showing now they've got a deeper bench. They could definitely put some points in and kind of carry out the defensive assignments that Tony Bennett wants. Chase Coleman finds Murray on the wing. Shot clocks at five. Murray's got to go. Left hand blast, no. Follow is good by Gardner. There's a penetration and Gardner being able to muscle, get that offensive rebound. This is the time when you get your guys that are not used to playing to be able to get some chemistry, get acclimated. Tony Bennett's guys are going to play defense, but you want to get them the offensive rhythm and some touches when they can. Spence driving, and it's taken away. I'm not able to get it back. Holmstrom hits the three. And Jack comes through at a three-pointer at Seton Hall on Wednesday. It's his first bucket of this game. Gardner. Mom, it's time to 
Finally starting to get a little rhythm in the offense. They're starting to hit some shots now. Well, and they're able to touch the paint a little bit more than they were earlier, and that's where they had their first half success. So Virginia had done a good job of being able to keep them out on the perimeter and then limit them, but that last time you see Allen being able to turn the corner, draw that foul. Jerome Allen, two shots. Missing the first of two. Well, so many of these guys that are returnees, like Allen, played precious few minutes last year. And Allen's a guy who averaged six minutes a game. And they are being asked to take on much larger roles. And we've talked about that what they lost, 84%. You're talking 57 points per game. Returning, 11%. About, excuse me, 16% and only 11 points returning. You like how I did that math from the Georgia Tech? Well, I'm engineers, I, I would expect nothing less. Yeah. You're welcome, Bob. And this is its way past your bedtime, too. It is. I actually, I need. I, I, I took a nap today. <laughs> <laughs> Naps are my friend. Done. Coleman gets rid of it. McNeely. Oh, oh they start to fall in love with this kid. Oh, my. Great penetration by Coleman. And McNeely has shown him, man, you give me daylight, you might as well cancel Christmas. It's a bucket. That's his fourth three pointer. Denied at the rim. Cabs on the push. Coleman. Murray. His runner rolls in. And Murray has shown that he's one of those guys that can put his strong athletic and put his head down and get to the rim that last time. Nice acrobatic finish with the left. 79-35. Spence to the baseline. And a blocking foul. On Chase Coleman. Chase, the senior out of Norfolk and Maury High School. Cavaliers make changes. And it's going to be Tristan Howe coming in. Spence to the line. Front end is good. 5.02 left. King Rice and his ball club. And a torturous first week schedule. Seton Hall, Virginia, and then on to Illinois. But you know, if you're King Rice, you take advantage of these opportunities when even though the game is out of hand, you want your guys to run their sets. You want to be able to go ahead and, and keep running and keep focusing. There's nothing like being able to have reps against really good teams like this. Oh, so McNeely's going to knock down another three. Spence to the corner. And a good looking shot by Andrew Ball out of the corner. Again, good possession. Spence being able to penetrate, force the Virginia players to have to converge on him. And you get a wide open three. Great offensive set. Coleman and a little push by Spence. Fourth foul on Jakari. 414. Left in the ball game and a 79-39 lead. And Chase Coleman. Ready to step up. 1-1. One one. Missed the front end. Monmouth rebound. Doyle looking inside. Spence, nowhere to go. And there's a block. Here's Ryan Dunn with a block shot. 
Shot clock at one. Spence, air ball. Shot clock violation. Great defense. You see Doug come up limping. Limping a great defensive possession. Been all UVA tonight. A huge protect the paint feature. Brian, some outstanding D inside. And we talked about that Virginia defense all night long. And it's how they were able to defend getting block after block. And it was the steals too, Bob, that contributed to them having 33 points off of turnovers, 19 tur turns. And that's your CPI security protecting the paint. Well done. 340 left. Coleman tried to dump it down big to Howe, but to his big Howe, but turnover instead. And runner rebounded by Ryan Dunn. Oh, nice pass. Howe fouled. So some free throws coming. Tristan Howe to the strike. Time for our Continental Tire recap tonight. Let me show you some interesting numbers here. Look at the forced turnovers. Well, Cavaliers 19. That leads to the 33 points off the of turnovers, highlighting the 38 bench points. How about the eight blocks? Overwhelming performance here against Monmouth tonight. And the foul on Howe as the ball entered the post. First, now you see King Rice pacing in front of that Monmouth bench. Been a Mark tough Sizzle night for the former North Carolina Tar Heel. And these folks in John Paul Jones Arena tonight, they may not know about Monmouth. They may not know the Monmouth players very well. They've seen a rout tonight. But longtime Virginia fans know the name King Rice. And again, King was, you know, I, I remember the battles back when I was at Georgia Tech, Kenny Anderson and Dennis Scott. And, you know, King was a fiery guy. You know, McDonald's All-American was the guy that definitely could go. And this mom this team is going to get better. A point guard on a Carolina team that went to the Final Four in 1991. Under Dean Smith, 80 to 40, Virginia. Murray. Another Virginia three. Good penetration. You know, I really love Ryan Dunn. Now look at him. I, he shows some remnants of ex UVA player and current uh, player DeAndre Hunter with his length and defense. Mm -hmm. He's got a long way to go to be a. Ooh. Nice move. He really got that one. He almost got that one. We're talking about King Rice. We want to roll back the digs. 89 to 86. King not only had the game winner in the second overtime, he also hit a jump shot with 30 seconds to go in regulation that sent the game to the first overtime. And boy, those are the days when Carolina, Virginia had some knockdown dragouts at University Hall. That might go in old school. I saw King rocking the high top fade. <laughs> oh, yeah. The turnaround by Dunn is good. That's not hey, that kid. I don't know what's going to happen. He's going to be a problem one day. Yeah, when you look at it, six eight with the length, being able to put the ball on the floor, he's long, and that's why I say that the guy that steps out for me is DeAndre Hunter. And you know the defensive guy that had the length has got that that range, and you see with him being able to get the ball, and he's got a lot of skill. Coleman. Of the basket. How did he come up with that? <laughs> no pun intended. 87 42. And a timeout for Monmouth. King Rice. 
Ball club calmed down a little bit in that huddle. I want to remind you that coming up on Sunday, it's a doubleheader of ACC basketball. At 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Youngstown State travels to South Bend for a non conference shootout with the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And then at 6, Virginia Tech welcomes William and Mary to Blacksburg as the 2023 ACC basketball season continues. And you, sir, will be at the castle on I Sunday. I will. Interesting to see this Virginia Tech team. Another team sort of floating under the radar a little bit here in the preseason prognostication. Justin Mutz, you know, he's one of those guys that do everything machine. Interesting to see. There's a buddy. Off to the basket and a big one-hander for Ryan Dunn. Yeah, this, this kid's a player. He, he is definitely a player. I will see DeAndre Hunter in Philadelphia tomorrow night, and I will tell him I saw you <laughs> last night at Virginia. His name is Ryan Dunn. Ball from the wing. Alstrom puts it up. Now rebounds. I think Cavaliers just going to sit on it here and ride out the shot clock. 89 to 42. The Cavaliers will go to two and zero. Oh. Boy, that was an impressive performance, Brian. Yeah, and you talk about the defense and how they were becoming very, very uh, impressive performance by Tony Bennett's club tonight. It is going to be a shot clock violation, so it's not technically over yet. They got it. Seton Hall. Not Seton Hall. Monmouth has got to inbound the ball. Just seven tenths of a second. Then get it in and we'll call it a night. And they touch it, and the ball game is over. Tony Bennett has to be thrilled with what he saw tonight. Yeah, with the defense, and you talk about the 12 threes, being able to come up and the turnovers, points off the turnovers. How about the, the bench production? A lot of positive things to go around for this Virginia ball club tonight. An outstanding performance, and not only the, the